It had to happen eventually, I suppose. The Young Glory 3 blows out two sections of their barrel in their last shot on Sunday. In the ever-present quest for more power, their barrel separates. But hit? most of the pumpkin survives, landing right, right in front about of us, about 150 feet away. Just to be clear, pumpkin chunking is an inherently safe sport, except for setup and loading and shooting and taking down or just being within a half mile of any of them. Yet in all this hazardous quest for more power, air cannon distances haven't really increased in the last 15 years. I'm Leonard Vance for American Shucker, and this is the reason I think that's going on. Spheres have interesting drag coefficients, and the drag coefficient of a sphere, the size of an 8.5 pound pumpkin, looks something like this. At very low Mach numbers, the drag coefficient is about 0.5, but then that goes to a transition zone and drops to about 0.17, for speeds up to about Mach 0.6. Above Mach 0.6, drag increases as you approach transonic flow, and it goes all the way back up to about 1 for speeds that are uh, transonic and supersonic. To make matters worse, as you increase speed, drag goes up as a function of the square of the velocity times the drag coefficient. So the total drag on a pumpkin looks something like this. It gets really hard to push a pumpkin through the air at supersonic speeds. But that's only half the story, and now we have to talk about gas dynamics. Hey, Kim, is this sounding too much like a physics lesson? Yeah. She knows everything. It's useful to think about gas as a large number of bouncy balls hitting each other and bouncing randomly all over the place, except they don't lose energy when they bounce. And strangely enough, the speed of those particles is not a function of pressure, but of temperature only. It doesn't matter how much you compress air. When you release it from that chamber, the velocities of the air molecules have a distribution which looks like this, where the mean velocity is somewhere around 500 meters per second. So by the time you're up to Mach 1, you're already losing a good third of the particles that can help you move along with the pumpkin. And so now you've got a double whammy that's hitting you. A, the drag has gone way up, and B, the number of gas molecules you have to push the pumpkin has gone way down. If you take a look at the trends over the last 10 years, you can see that the catapults and the trebuchets are starting to catch up, which brings me to this point. Will anybody, somebody, stand up to beat the leaf blowers? It's not that they're bad guys, they're actually great guys, but after 15 years you think one of us would figure out how to beat them. For an air cannon, Mach 1 is a huge barrier because you're losing power at the same time you need a whole bunch more. For a catapult, that just isn't the case. Not that that helps as much as you might think. I mean, take a look at how the distance increases as launch speed goes up over Mach 1. To get a mile, you need about a Mach 3 pumpkin on a calm day in Delaware. And that's an order of magnitude more energy than even we're planning on. And all this suggests is that it's a lot more difficult to get a mile than you might think. Shooting from a higher altitude or increasing the density of the pumpkins make this easy, or maybe even a good strong tailwind. But we don't have paths for any of these that we can plan on. Still, a supersonic trebuchet, now that would be something. We could conceivably do it if we get the right aerodynamics on the arm and go with a four-pound pumpkin instead. And that's a story for another day. I'm Leonard Vance for American Chucker, and we'll see you next time. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind.